Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here, Azadine and Graham. Azadine, I want to introduce you to our newest iFall ambassador, Graham Russell. Graham, thank you so much for being here again. You may not know that Graham is an avid conservationist. We know him as singer, songwriter for the hit phenomenon, Air Supply, which is incredible, but who knew that he was also an avid conservationist. So welcome uh, to the IFAW family, Graham. Thank you very much. It's such an honor and a pleasure to be here. And I hope I can contribute to the cause and I'm all yours. That's just wonderful. And you know, I just want to say welcome to everyone who's listening today and to welcome Graham, who uh, is really a phenomenon. And I think you're going to be incredibly interested in what he has to say and what he's going to share and how closely we are associated already together in the IFO brand of you know, animals and people thriving together. So I really hope you enjoy what you're going to hear today. So um, with that said, Graham, we would love to hear about your passion, how you got started with animals, and really what led you to this and, and how it's played out throughout your whole life. When I, I mean, I've always loved animals ever since I was very young, especially birds. I've been the bird guy, you know. But when I, uh, when I discovered uh, Utah, I was able to buy a nice piece of uh, land. And the first year I lived there, which was 1990, I've been there for 30 years now. They had the really incredibly heavy snow. And around my house, all these animals were just dying. They couldn't get through the snow. They couldn't, the snow was like seven feet deep. It was like a ridiculous amount of snow. All these animals were all, all over the place. Not just deer, they were elk and moose, coyotes, and they were just dying in the snow. So I decided to do something about it, you know, and so I called up the, the county where I live and I said, do you have any um, laws about people wanting to be a conservationist or is there something I can do? And they said, whatever you want to do, you just go ahead and do it. So I did. And uh, I turned my whole property into a, a conservation easement. And then I beca became uh, a rehabilitator for all these animals. But anyway, so I started all that. And, it be, and I did it for like 15 years. And in the end, the, uh, the county were bringing animals to me and they were bringing people to learn from me. But it, became, it becomes a, a way of life. But it's not just that, it's just doing something that has great meaning, you know, like saving lives, uh, animal lives. Uh, it's just so rewarding, you know. And, you know, I put a lot of time, effort and money into it. But uh, it, it, the rewards were just fantastic you know to bring a, a an animal back from the brink of death you know yeah. it is a great feeling and i can't imagine uh living a life without that now you know you're reminding me um when you said living without them you know one of my favorite songs honestly is without you and i was oh. thinking yeah i was thinking boy that that could be a song that's powerful to reach out uh, to for exactly what you're talking about, you know, is yeah. that a world without mm -hmm. those animals is just devoid of soul. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They just bring so much. You know, you're, you're making me think, uh, you know, when you talk about living without those animals, right? Yeah. You know, in, in our work and we get involved in all sorts of things, conservation and, and wildlife trade and, um, you know, the sale of, of ivory and the sale of rhino horn yeah. and things like that. And, you know, when I meet people who say, no, you know, I'm, I'm just not interested. I'm just here to make the money. And, yeah. you know, one of, the, one of the things that we used to say, and I kind of stopped saying it, but you're reminding me, is, well, what would you, you know, what would the world be without elephants? Or what would it be without yeah. elk or, or rhinos? Mm. And sometimes those, those people who just want to, to shoot uh, yeah. say, yeah, what do I care? What, I mean, how will my life change if there are yeah. no elephants in the world? Everything needs, needs each other. We all need each other. Yeah. You know, and we need animals uh, because they nurture us. Like in my greenhouse, there's all these kind of weird insects and bugs and stuff. 
but they're all, they've all got a part to play. Yeah. And it's really interesting to see. And that's on a small scale. Of course, the animals in the world, like you are just talking about, elephants and rhinos, they're all part of, our, of ourselves too. So, but you're right. There are people that wouldn't think twice about destroying anything, yeah. uh, you know, and they, they just do it, you know. The, the, the focus that I try to get across to people, and I hope you can help us with that, is, you know, sharing the earth. And if the answer is yes, then we can have all sorts of discussions about how best to do it. If, yeah. if they answer no, you know, honestly, Graham, there's not a lot you can say to those folks because they no. just don't see the world in, in the way that we do. You're right. The people that don't care really don't care about anything. Yeah, you know, I mean, this is, this is one of the big, big issues that we, we deal with and, you know, on the conservation side. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear you talk about your own rescue work because that's the other thing that we've really focused on, two pillars – rescue and then conservation and you know the point that we try to get across all the time with you know our IFA communications is that you can rescue an animal you can rehabilitate them but if they don't have a place to live they'll never go back into the wild there has to be wild space left Graham we know you have a passion for rescue so I do we would love to see you come out on the field with IFA for one of these on the field rescue efforts. Do you have any interest in that? I would. Oh, I would love to. I'd be there in a heartbeat. Yeah, I'd love that. <laughs> for you to come out and um, and get to Cape Cod and see where our marine rescue team is there and some of the extraordinary work, you know. And again, to your point earlier, changing behavior of what people have done for years and years and years. They said yeah. you couldn't rescue a dolphin. You couldn't rehabilitate it and release it back into the wild. But the marine right. rescue team has shown that that's simply not true. And they've done it successfully for, for many, many years. You know, I know that you, you just celebrated, I think you had 5,000 concerts, which is yeah. extraordinary. Uh, yeah. And very recently, our rescue team just celebrated their, their 5,000th rescue. Uh, oh really? Yeah, yeah, That's and I know a lot. A lot it's questions. extraordinary. It's extraordinary. Yeah. I mean, I, I'd like to help wherever I can. You know, obviously, I'm a musician. Well, that actually brings us to party for a porpoise. Yeah, um, we heard Graham that you may have something special in store for the virtual event, a song, perhaps. Oh sure, yeah. When is that event in August? Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah that's right. Yeah. August. Absolutely. I will definitely play for sure. Maybe all out of love. I know that's actually my parents' thing. <laughs> oh, is it? Plus, I, I always I love playing too. <laughs> I'll, any excuse for me to play, you know, love and its accompanying emotions needs to be strong. It needs to be loud and passionate. They need to feel that passion and that energy, you know. And when they do, something happens. Yeah. What happens is they keep coming back. You know what's extraordinary about what you're saying is that for, for me, uh, it's not just about a project that we do. It's trying to create a movement of people yes. who want to be involved. And yes. they, we have to find a way to express that love for nature or love for animals. And yes. there's so much bad news that yes. many people feel so overwhelmed and they feel hopeless. Mm. They feel hopeless. And, yeah. and I think that finding expression uh, yeah. through, through the music and connecting it, you know, to what, what we do on the ground creates that movement. And if, if we put those, those people together in a way that hasn't been done before, we're, we're, we do change the world. Yeah, absolutely. And you're right. It is, it is nature itself, which involves everything. It's, it's humanity and animals and people people's interaction with each other and that's that's what it, it's all about you know it, it's respecting and honoring nature itself because i mean really there's no other choice you must respect it because uh we're all gonna fall away you know we won't be we won't be here in x number of years however many it is but uh, the legacy has to remain and and keep moving forward because nature if, if we join with nature it will allow i believe it will allow us to do that yeah, I'm a why, big would we, why would we destroy our own home well yeah exactly 
it's you know i see i see that on the news all the time you're so right and it's like you really get bombarded with it but something has to change you know we the mentality of of humans needs to change it just does to involve everyone but you're right why why destroy everything uh, because you know our children and our children's children will be left lumbered with the mistakes that we that we make now or they'll be they'll be able to enjoy everything that we do create for them i, I right. want to help us change people's behavior to create and, and in some ways to create new behavior because some people yeah. will never change their behavior as you know but to right. create new behaviors but you're right behavior can change and i i I've seen music change people's minds on things and make them be a different kind of person that they didn't think they could be, you know. And the most uh, unassuming people can change too. The ones you don't think, there's no way that guy's gonna, gonna change his behavior, but they do, and music is a big part of that, I think. Graham, thank you again for joining us, for taking the time to share your stories of your passion for conservation and the beautiful tie-in with music, you've said so many powerful things that I know our supporters are just going to fall head over heels for. So thank you and welcome as the brand new iFall ambassador. We are so excited for all the things we have in store together to work towards a world where animals and people thrive. Thank you. Yeah, and Grandma, I just wanna thank you also and, and for sharing your journey with us. And so much of what you have said and what you've shared is really what IFA is about. Oh, it's thank you so much. It's my honor and a great pleasure to be involved and to be an ambassador. When I first heard about the possibility, I jumped, jumped at the chance. But uh, yeah, I hope we can make a difference. I think we can. Uh, it'll be a little, a little different with the musical genre coming in, but I think it's going to be very powerful. And once again, thank you for the opportunity. It's a great pleasure to be here and to be a part of, of the cause.